Hi, I'm Diana, the artist behind My McDoodles. Welcome to my channel. Today's project is something a little bit different than what I generally share on here. We're going to paint a watercolor butterfly with real watercolors. The project you see in front of you is what we'll create today. For this project, I'm using Canson watercolor paper. It comes in a pad like this. I'll have a link in the description. It's um, a nice thick paper, it's a good quality, and it's affordable. The brush I'm using is Princeton Neptune watercolor brush. It's a synthetic squirrel brush. Um, this is a size six, and I might also try a uh, size four for the details. These are also available with a link in my description. The paint I use is by M. Graham. This is a pack that has 10 colors in it. They also have smaller packs. I really like this paint, but there are a lot of options out there. Winsor & Newton is another nice brand. I'll have a link to this one in my description and some alternatives. For my metallic paint, I'm using this Como Ribi watercolor paint set by Mozart Supplies. And it's this really pretty shimmery um, paint that adds just like a little bit of sparkle and shine to your design. Besides that, you'll just need a jar of water, um, a palette for your paint or a, like a plastic tray or something to mix your paint in, and paper towel and some newspaper. So first we need to get our design on the paper. So I'm gonna sketch it in really lightly with pencil. Uh, because a butterfly is symmetrical and it might be difficult to draw it perfectly symmetrical, I just quickly cut out a butterfly shape um, out of just scrap paper by folding it in half and cutting it so that it's perfectly symmetrical. And I quickly drew in an idea of the pattern so I have a general idea as I'm going. Um, and this can also just be sketched on the paper, but I thought this would be a nice quick way to uh, make sure it's perfectly symmetrical and that way I don't have to be so careful about drawing it. You could also just use tracing paper um, or whatever works for you. I did a quick Google search. This is not going to be a butterfly that's completely realistic and something that will be found in nature as far as the pattern and the colors. Um, it's more just for fun. But you can just do a quick Google search, see if there's a butterfly you'd like to paint or if there's a specific butterfly that you're interested in doing the pattern for, I would look up what that butterfly actually looks like so you can recreate it in your painting. So first I'm just going to quickly get this butterfly sketched out onto the watercolor paper very lightly. If you know what color you're going to make your butterfly, you could actually do it in colored pencil very lightly. And then when you paint, it blends right in and you can't see your lines. I'm just using a regular um, graphite pencil today to do mine and in the end you might see some of the pencil lines but I'm okay with that. I'm going to start by painting this butterfly one wing at a time. What I like to do is use really, really um, diluted paint to give it like a nice wash and then drop in the color to help it spread. You can either just use plain water and spread it all in the border. It's kind of hard to see when you do that. Or you can use tinted water. So uh, I'm just going to pick up like a little bit of my color over here and a, a lot of water. And just fill in this whole wing right here. And it's okay if it's not completely solid. It looks kind of nice when you leave some white gaps. If you have a pattern where you need um, to have like little white spots or something like that, just be careful not to fill those in and just leave them white and let the watercolor paper be your, um, your white for that spot. And while this is still wet, we can drop in like a little bit of darker bits here and there and it'll kind of 
you know, like spread out, the, the paint will bleed through the wet areas and it looks really pretty when it dries like that. I like to add a little bit of metallic paint and a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to pick up some of that and drip that in too. And it spreads really nicely while this is all still wet. You might have to work quickly depending how much water you place down and like how um, warm the area is where you're painting. Like sometimes when I'm painting outside, it's drying like super fast, so I'll have to work really quickly. Um, I happen to be inside right now, so it's a little bit easier and the temperature is like normal and everything, so it's not drying all that fast. So you have a little more time to work with it. So something like that looks pretty to me. I'm going to leave that one dry and work on this side. There's some areas where you feel like maybe you put a little too much color. You can um, siphon it back up. You can either use your brush. So you just want to rinse your brush, blot it out with your paper towel, and hold it over the area that you want to lighten up, and it'll suck up the color into the bristles. Or you can just dab it really gently with your paper towel. And that's how you can lift a little bit of your color. If you feel like you have a little dark area, or if you splattered some color off on the border, you can just wet it with clean water and then use the paper towel to press it and it blocks it up. So you can see the paint is only going to spread to the areas that were wet and it won't go into the dry areas. So that's a wet on wet technique. And I'm gonna repeat the same technique down here to do the bottom wings. I'm going to let that completely dry before I go back in and add the little details in the butterfly wings and the body. And I'll probably add a little bit more like metallic paint once this is dry. Once your painting is completely dry, you can go back in and add in the extra details for the wings and the body or any overlapping areas without worrying about your paint bleeding into the other sections. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to click like and to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next fun tutorial. If you post your work on Instagram, you can tag me at mymcdoodles or hashtag mymcdoodles so I can share your work in my stories. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.